Can we, he said, I noticed the Guardian haven't uh, submitted what they thought to the ECGD. I noticed they haven't written a report, and they're welcome to do it. Well, we've had a chat with the Guardian editor, and he's going to do it. Are you going to submit? I hadn't thought of doing it, but uh, as he's asked me, uh, why not? I've got one or two thoughts, and uh, I'm sure we could... Um pitch one or two interesting ideas into the debate. I think that the least we can ask is that it should um, declare what its rules are so that we can make a judgment about what it is. And I, of course, I think those, those rules ought to include human rights and environmental considerations. One other thing I've got to tell you about on the ECGD. So they've got an advisory committee from all these people from industry, corporations, banks, and some silly person merely said, those people on that board, the advisory board, how much business has the companies which they have a declared interest in, how much business goes to those companies that they're involved with? And one of the guys there, David McLachlan, he's involved with HSBC Bank, and the amount of business they get each year, or last year from ECGD, was 794 million quids worth. Right? This is over a quarter of the budget has gone to this the, this firm that this guy's connected with, who's on the advisory committee. And in the committee, what, I think it was Anne Clewitt said, isn't that a conflict of interest? And Cable, in terms of, can we just put his quote up? There is a conflict of interest all round. I'll do it in his voice. If they're not given advice from the quarter experience that they work in, why have their advice? Eh, I'm the minister, I like a sausage. <laughs> so he's saying there's got to be a conflict of interest. Which is like saying, well, you know, yes, we do sell guns to murderers, because uh, who else would use them? Because <laughs> we are, we're on the front page of Baptist Times, because one of the lads from the Cambridge Two piece we did last week, where we went and handed ourselves in, um, <laughs> one of the fellas we went in with was a guy called the Reverend Martin Blakeborough, and he's a good chap. And the other day, me and Martin found out that um, we were actually that Mo Molum was going to go down to this drug project and announce that she was giving more money, and um, we went along there to go in. Mo Molum eventually comes out to this garden. She comes out the door, and we're facing her. She just went, "What are you doing here?" <laughs> and I said, "Well, I'm with the Reverend Martin Blaker, and he'd like to ask you a question." And Martin asked a question about how you can give more money for drug projects and then arrest people who are working on them, and. Mo Molum, honest Mo, talks from the hip, straight talking Mo, add a bit of blow, but Mo the blow, you know, <laughs> nicely, all right, just say Mo. I'm concerned about the judgment that has left two people in prison who are running a drop-in centre, mm. which is not so dissimilar to the one I've been working on. Can I just interrupt, um, because I know the case you're referring to, yeah. it's under appeal, so there's nothing that I can say in answer to it, but I'm well aware of it, and I think it's best to leave it at that, because otherwise we can uh, potentially create difficulties so and any other questions apart from that one sorry but that's the reality but at the moment i'm people... sorry i've given you my answer there's no point in going on we're just going to stop others having the chance to ask normal shit politician normal shit that's what she is she wouldn't even comment on it right and what was, what was lovely was there's a whole load of journalists standing around. She goes, no, no, I've said, I've said there are other journalists who've got to take questions now. Are there any other questions? And all the journalists are... No other questions. That's ever so helpful, isn't it? We did a programme about Aldermast and AWE, the atomic weapons establishment, and about how they were illegally discharging tritium into the Aldermast stream, which is uh, nuclear waste water. And um, after we did the, sh the show, because the Environment Agency were thinking of taking them to court, after they, we did the show, they took them to court. And they charged them. And on the 13th of December, Hunting Bray, the operators at Aldermaston, pleaded guilty to all charges. And we were just like... <laughs> yes. And... And what, what happened was... So what happened was, was that um, while we were down there, um, because we got talking to the press guys down there, and we said, oh, you're doing so well in dealing with the press. Who knows? You're going to make these superb advances here at the Atomic Weapons Establishment. Maybe one day you'll open your own visitor's centre. And they went, well, that's been a pipe dream of ours for some time. <laughs> and so we went down to Aldermaston, and on land opposite the Atomic Weapons Establishment, we put up a big sign 
saying, AWE Visitor's Centre. There you go. <laughs> and it really is quite big. And so we went, down the, 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 we went down the other day after the judgment came out to kind of celebrate the judgment. Job well done. <laughs> the other bit of news to add to that is that Hunting Bray have lost the contract to operate Aldermaston AWE. Um, well, no, don't clap because the people who won it were British Nuclear Fuels. <laughs> and they take over on April the 1st. <laughs> We went down to the dome. And the dome, oh man, <laughs> it's everything I could have hoped for. <laughs> oh, you did not disappoint me. If you haven't been in, I recommend you don't. I recommend you do not go in. Right? It's designed for Middle England. Middle class, Middle England, cack. And it's just they don't want... They, there's nothing there for anyone that the Labour Party was designed to work for. We, we took some friends. We took some, uh, we took some people from Campaign Against the Arms Trade. We took some um, union folk along with us. And we went in. They've got a thing called the work zone, right? Now remember, this is Saturday, we're there on Saturday, right? People have worked hard all week, they've, they've saved their money, they thought, well, go to the dome, they've got down there, it's their weekend off, and suddenly goes, let's go in the work zone and see what you do during the week. Oh, you must be fucking kidding. <laughs> and we wandered through, and they've got this great big wall, it's a glass wall, and behind the wall, it's got all these little yellow post-it notes. Yeah. And it's all about work, and about what we do at work, and who to call them, what to do. And so we were in there with some friends, and we just went along and started sticking our own up. <laughs> and the people were writing their own, it was great. We had, we had stuff like, you know, um, old McDonald's had a farm, but it's been downsized since Monsanto became involved. <laughs> you know, <laughs> at revolt. And then we'd have ones like, is Tesco's 12 million pound donation to the Dome linked to the abolition of the car park tax? <laughs> And we got about, probably about, well, it was about 60, 70 on there, sort of, about there. And then someone spotted them. <laughs> this guy started laughing. <laughs> He's walking along really slowly, peeling them off, just giggling and walking. <laughs> and then behind him, he couldn't see everyone else just going. Boom, 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 boom. So we've gone into the next one. One of the things, by the way, that happens in, in the dome is they've employed all these performance artists and, and sort of like, you know, actors and all this thing. And so you'll be standing there and this person in medieval dress will come up and go, roll up and roll up, see ye folk dances of Macedonia at the McDonald tent. <laughs> so we're, we're wandering around and we get to, because there's all these performers involved, we wander into the mind zone. And the mind zone is sponsored by British Aerospace Marconi the weapons systems manufacturer, the arms people. They sponsored the mine zone and there's nothing in it. Presumably because they've shot it out. <laughs> and what we've done is we've got some friends who come along with us. And I don't know where they got changed or how they got in. But we've got mates with videos and all of this sort of blending in around the place. And you have to pretend you're interested for a minute. And then suddenly...